Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched the show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are, it always changes. I think there are like 67 of us now, so everybody gets to do what he likes, and I really like doing elder law. So I have been, I do this show called Bergeron Briefs to, to supplement the presentations that I do at the Council on Aging in Tisbury, which is more legal focused because the purpose of this show is really to, to introduce you, if you're a senior, um, to, fo to folks you should know and to programs you should know about. And one of the people you should know for a bunch of reasons that we're going to talk about is my friend Larry Gomez. Uh, whom I met a couple of years ago. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for the invitation. And Pleasure I met to you. Be here. And I met you when you became a board member of the Martha's Vineyard Center for Living. That is correct. Because we do a lot of work with those folks. Yes. And and so I, w I wondered if you could just start off by talking a little bit about how it was that you ended up here, because you too, I am told, are a wash ashore, although from longer ago, right? Yes. yes. And how you came to be here and in Tisbury and as selectman, sure. right? Uh, and then we, we, let's talk a little bit about your your involvement in the in the Center for Living over those years, and your own perspective as a like not maybe not as old as me, but as a, as a, maybe a potential senior, on on what it's what it is about being a senior uh, and living in Tisbury, mm -hmm. and and how you think that might be changing in sure. and government's role because you're in the government. So well, so how'd you how'd you get here exactly? You told uh, me you were you were surfing off of Martha's. Vineyard. No, I wish I were. Crashed. No, I, no, I was no. Um, uh, uh, worked in Silicon Valley in yeah. Santa Clara in uh, Northern California, yeah. San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, came out with a business trip um, and met some. Uh, people that I did became friends through the business. And the individual said, uh, we usually rent a cottage down in Chatham. Yep. And that sounded like an interesting thing to do. So my wife and I rented the cottage yep. and in Chatham and we took day trips, Provincetown, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard was, being, was our last day trip. And we yep. came over and ended up in Vineyard Haven. Yep. Rented bicycles and rode around and my wife said, gee, can we come back and can we come stay back longer? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, wives is like, sure, whatever you want to do, we can do. We can do, And Absolutely. so that's what happened. Uh, we came and stayed a couple of days at the uh, Thorncroft Inn yep. uh, on Main Street, Vineyard Haven, yep. and uh, came back the following spring, did the Boston Marathon, came back, stayed again, came longer time in the summer. Uh, long story short, Carl at the Thorncroft said, you come so often, you should buy a place. <laughs> well, we did. We bought his sister property. You bought one of his which property? Which is, uh, yeah, it's a bed and breakfast, yeah. Greenwood House uh, yeah. on Greenwood Avenue. And yeah. we've been here since uh, full time since 1994. We had a house previous, which we did buy, as Carl recommended, yeah. in yeah. 1983. So, so, so you've been here for a while now. You've yeah, been. but I'm still, a, I call myself a vineyarder. Yeah. Uh, I'm not an islander. I wasn't right. born and raised here. Right. Well, um, it's because you got you got still have a little tiny bit of a Silicon Valley accent. Is that from right? A well, long, I don't, I, you know, I from a long time ago, yeah, well, right? Right. So hopefully, I'll get into pocket my car. Well, and well, no, 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 no. You don't want to get. Stuff, you don't want to get. Yeah. This is in America yeah, here, yeah. right? This is definitely the danger. Right. And then. Um, and so, yeah. how did you get involved in politics? Well, um, there was a, a CPA uh, act that was being passed the by the state Community Preservation Act. And um, I wasn't for By the way, my cousin's bill, my cousin Bob Duran yes. was a, a senator who he originally wrote, wrote the well, you community could preservation. Well, you could tell Bob I wasn't in favor of it. And you weren't it. in favor. Oh, yeah. Well, because yeah. it was a, they, they were proposing a 3% tax, and I owned yeah. a business plus my home. You know, that's a lot of money that I didn't want to put Good out you, for. Right. So I was one of the people who wasn't in favor of it. Yeah. Lo, lo and behold, it was passed. That year, after it was passed by the town meeting, um, there was a vacancy on the Tisbury Finance Committee. So I applied for that and got yeah. on it, yeah. thinking that I could help reverse this for our town. This is all positive eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's negative yeah. now, but it becomes positive. Yeah. Um, and uh, was served on the fi Finance Committee for 15 years. Uh, was chairman for eight or nine. and. Um, Finance committee is a great stepping stone for selectmen. Because you really understand the inner work. You you see right. everything in right. the town. Right. Uh, and we had put... You in, follow the money. In, you the, term, get, in right. the 15 years I was on it, I think we had five members become selectmen. Yep. Four or five. 
uh, one or two ran and didn't win. So it's yeah. a good jumping point. Yeah. And uh, that's where I got my start into government. Kind of yeah. being involved. And how long have you been on the Board of Selectmen now? I was elected in 2015, so it's two oh. and a half years. Oh, so it was almost years. immediately after that that you got that I that I would have met you then because that's right. So you, and we're getting back into the Center for Living, of yeah. which I'm a. I, I like to think myself as fiscally responsible, and I thought yeah. buying property, turning it over to a nonprofit, it was not a good thing. And um, th and this was all around when you were when you were thinking about acquiring the old VNA building, correct, or, correct, or, or authorizing the county to do it so that yes, they could they yes. could lease the, it to the the, the right. county wanted the towns to support that. I right. was not in favor of that. Well, right. as I bec was elected, uh, the board member came up because each town had a board member now on their. Um, Center for Living Board. Because that was part of the, re the, right. the that was, uh, I want to say part of the deal, but part of the reorganization that the Center for Living the did the, the, um, was to guarantee that every every community would have, have the, the town themselves, that the selectmen would, 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 would name a board member to the board. Right. right. And so as as I was not for the purchase of the building, they, I was, you figured you'd they be picked ideal. me because <laughs> I was going to be the watchdog. Right. And, and right. I think I am a watchdog. There's yeah. a few others that are, are and, and uh, we, we as towns in, on the island, we need to be fiscally responsible. We have to be very careful how we spend the taxpayers' money. Right, and, and, um, and especially given the fact that the Center for Living, the, the, certainly the vast majority of certain their operational funds come from the town. That yes. The, the notion of having town folks watching closely yes. makes, makes a tremendous well, the, amount of the, sense. Well, the yeah. Center for Living budget comes uh, from the towns. It's, right. it's it divided to sixth of that comes out, and so uh, you know, we just want to watch how that's being operated, and uh, make sure that it's uh, used wisely yep. and uh, efficiently. Um, however, now that I'm on the board, I'm very uh, cautious and understanding of uh, uh, elderly needs. Uh, I had a mother-in-law that, well, I still do. She's a 101, and yeah, uh, that's an old mother-in-law. Yeah, and she still attends senior center where she lives in California. Yeah, and uh, it pr provides a very, very nice uh, uh, adjunct to a family. Right, uh, gives a respite to the caregiver. Because she's still whether at home. it's a mother, or father, she, brother, see. sister, whoever's yeah. going to be taken care of. Yeah. and it's a good thing. And they have activities, uh, which which are great. I think they do. They're wonderful. Um, and so, and so, what what is your sense now, having watched the board evolve over the last couple of years? What is your sense of the kind of the evolving mission of the Center for Living and, and how do you, how do you think that kind of fits into other issues involving seniors on the on the island? Well, um, I think the center is certainly taking care of uh, dementia people, mm -hmm. um, uh, elderly people who need uh, care, loving care, daily care, that daily kind care, of thing. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be forced probably into opening up that uh, Center for Living a lot more with elderly losing their homes. I mean, they, we have to help them. So maybe we can roll that all together and, yeah. and facilitate uh, some senior center livings. Um, the island doesn't really have that. We have a couple of spots on the island that you know, cater to seniors, yeah. uh, but we need more of that. Uh, we need a place for them to um, live by themselves if, when they're capable of still by themselves. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a small studio, it doesn't have to be a 16-bedroom house like some of our homes are here, here in, uh, on the island. Right. Um, and uh, that's, that's a very interesting point because I think I, I know, as you know, I'm a real fan of Martha's Vineyard. I really like it, and 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 I think that one one of the things I like is the kind of sense of cohesiveness here that people oh, get yes. the fact, you know, if it's not on the island, you're not going to get it. So people kind of you know working yeah. together. Yeah, we make things work. And you make things work, but one of the one of the only things that's kind of a I don't want to say it's missing. You ha you have the the you know the brewer house, and then there's the the place in Edgartown. There's a small place in Edgartown. Yeah, there's also Hillside. Th this one. Uh, and it, then you have traditional senior housing. Yeah. But that but that notion of having uh, um, housing for folks who are still kind of independent, but who really would sh struggle staying in their own homes Correct. For a, in, and are very yeah. isolated staying yeah. in their own homes. Yeah. The notion of having that, that, that particular form is kind of not, not here. No, it's not, and, and, it, and it's going to be difficult to put it, one here because of the 
the uh, demographic and the layout of the island. Uh, yes. If we don't yes. specifically identify a place to build these kinds of things, that it's not going to work. Right. Uh, my mother lived in Indiana for uh, for the, her retirement period, and she no longer could really take care of her home. So what she ended up doing is putting herself into self-assisted living. Yes, assisted. And living. the only thing that she had to do was walk down the hall so that the yeah. nurses would give her her pills. But she was able to uh, eat in the dining room by herself, go shopping with the you know bus kind of atmosphere, but right. still felt like she had had a life. Right. And she just wasn't withering away and giving up. Right. And I and I suppose some purpose. she had some purpose. And she had a purpose. And and and, and your mother probably find it. I always find it. I find it with my clients that fo folks, especially if they're if they were tended to be social at all before, it kind of brings that back out. Absolutely. Because yeah. for folks, if, if, I, I, you have folks who are who they don't. Of course, you don't want to leave your home. You never want to leave your home. Mm -hmm. My clients all want to die and be buried in the backyard. You know, but but the the difficulty with being at home is that if there's nobody else there, right? Right. right. And you and if you're having trouble physically getting out. Right, it becomes a really small place. Right, very and, small. And, You're and, confined. And, it's almost like a cell. And, uh, would be uh, you just can't g do anything uh, else other than just stay in that little small confinement. Right. So and and I I, I sort of d did that to my home. Yeah. Um, I, I have a three-story home. Yeah. Uh, on the first floor, I remodeled the bedroom that is on the first floor into a handicap room yeah. bedroom in case we needed to do. Uh, live there without having to go upstairs. In case you need to do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I bet that's becoming more and more common. I that think pe it people is. Are, people are designing kind of with that in mind. With that in mind so they don't have to leave their homes. Right. Um, and right. if they have somebody to come in, they can just all on the first floor, uh, easily accessible to everything. And I find um, that kids are even starting to design that kind of the, the kind of the in-law apartment with that in mind also. Yeah. They're just kind of looking ahead saying, so how are we going to do this Well, exactly? you know, you thought, you it's know? interesting about the uh, in-law apartment. You know, you go to other cultures in the world and everybody's mother is there. The father is there. Right. You know, it, at one time in the United States, not very long ago, you put mom or dad in the nursing home. And maybe, we are, maybe our culture is changing, so we're becoming more of a family unit. Where yes. before, once you left the nest, you left the nest. You were kind you of were gone. gone. That's you know, true. you call mom and dad on the telephone. You came out and visited them if you were on the East Coast once a week or for a week and once a year, that kind of a thing. So, uh, it's nice to have the family unit coming back together. Now, I'm I'm just I'm just curious about this because I found, so I do quite a bit of work on the other island also, mm -hmm. I mean, we, the island that won't be named, right? That, yeah. yeah. Um, but I found there, I've met quite a few people who. Well, like you, they're from off island, and and now they've been there for many years, and in many ways they're really isolated because they don't have any family that it's you know, tough. and they're not from the community, yeah. right? And I was wondering if if that if that kind of thing is starting to happen also in in Tisbury, right? If you if you're finding many people who are moving here kind of to retire and and just really don't aren't aren't connected that way. Um, personally, I think that's happening. Um, yeah, it was going to just anecdotally. I, I feel a lot of people who bought homes 30, 40, 50 years ago or family homes or whatever who are now retiring are moving in, certainly into Tisbury. Yeah. I think the average age in Tisbury has to be somewhere like 63, 62. Come on, really? Really? Yeah, I really do. And um, they're bringing, they're not bringing family because their family are gone. Right. So that, that could impact our taxes a little bit. Um, uh, because maybe they may be spend more yeah. on with taxes, such as a school, uh, things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, and our schools are decreasing size-wise because elderly are not bringing family with them that are going to be in the school. So your school age population is actually... This is, is actually, my personal yeah. feeling. Yeah. I think in, the, in 15, 20 years, the school age uh, average of maybe 300 in, a, uh, in our school in Tisbury might be 250. Um, I see. I see. Because that, because that piece of the population that yeah, is having kids, right. and of course the family sizes are small. So they're smaller, but we yeah. may have also a transient community because we have a workforce that that's not here permanently for 10, 15, 20 years. They're right. here for a few months to a year, maybe, and then they turn over. And then they're turning over. So, so from your own perspective, how does that? 
how does that change in the population or that aging of the population affect the services that you think that the, gov that the local government provides or can be providing? Do you, do you see in the future other, the, the need for other kinds of programs? And, or, 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 or are people starting to talk about that? Right? I, I, I think we need to provide more services for our elderly. You know, I'm getting elderly. I just had a birth the other day. I'm 72 years old. Well, congratulations. In, in eight years, I'll be 80, all right? In two eight, years, you'll be my Eight years ago, I was age. still in my 60s. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, you, we need, we're going to have to have more services to, to help uh, this, the elderly population, really do, uh, whether it's uh, more meals on wheels, uh, free rides to the doctor, that kind of stuff. And this community, I really think, does that. Yeah. Uh, they really pull together when there's a problem. Uh, when somebody has an issue, the, the community comes together. And maybe we need to come together more for our elderly. There's a lot of, when I was growing up, I probably knew nobody that was 90 years old. I probably know 25 people that are 90. That are 90. Right? That's right. And I, and I just presented a certificate to, to a lady uh, on her birthday about two weeks ago who just turned 100. And I know a lot of 100 people now. So it's amazing. And we have to really be aware of that. Yeah. So when someone is in need, we have to be ready to help them some way. Yeah, and, and as, as a matter of fact, you, you, know, you talk about transportation. And I would suppose in a community like this one, which, although it's fairly dense right downtown, but mm -hmm. then there's people, that, then a lot of people are kind of spread out. Oh, sure. So having that kind of transportation in a form that is obviously as affordable as possible for folks. You well, know. We, have, uh, we have the uh, medical transport that will take you to doctors off island from mm -hmm. Falmouth, I believe, to Hyannis and to yeah. Boston. Isn't that actually, um, that, I was surprised to find that's kind of one of the ancillary programs of the Center for Living. Yeah, that's right. They actually, right. Made, they yeah, actually right. run that program. And uh, you know, so if an elderly person has to go to the doctor uh, and a son or daughter or family member can't take them, right. uh, you can make arrangements to pick you up take you over, take you to the doctor, drop you off, and pick you up in an hour or so after your, your, your appointment. Right, and, um, that, and, 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 to have, but to, and to have that yeah. really island-wide. I don't know if we really have it island-wide as much as uh, using public transportation. But again, if you're five, six, eight blocks away from a bus stop. You might as well be a mile. You can't, you know. Um, right. I, I, I visited uh, Budapest, with my wife many years ago, and they have a, a transportation system in Hungary that you cannot miss a bus. You'll, you'll, you can hit a bus within a block of your home. So they have three or four types of transportation. Yeah. You have a regular bus like we would have here. Yeah. Then you would move, move to a metro. Uh, then you would go to the underground. And every one of those was in a block of somebody. And that uh, was a so con kind of a conscious design. Well, so that's that been for, you know, since the 1890s. Right. We're, right. we're living in the 2000s here and we can't even get a, a transit system maybe that would pick up. I want to make a call. Uh, a, a, if, let's, say, let's say I want to go to the doctor. I call yeah. the VTA, say, would you please pick me up at 10 o'clock? We don't have that. Sounds like very expensive to do that, but that's a start. Right. It's a start because there are people who can't walk to the bus stop. Right, and, and to figure it out. Because that, and, and, and I would suppose in that community of the future, that may be something that 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 there's some kind of public-private partnership that kind of makes that happen, yeah. right? Because yeah. people have got to be connected. I, I don't I don't like to hear a, a 90 year old person who, who is a great driver, loves to drive, have to drive at twilight, and and they maybe have eye eye problems, eyesight problems. Right. So that that kind of thing, you know, try to help out. Right, because I always, I always tell my, my senior friends that, you know, and, and the hardest, of course, the hardest thing you're a senior and, and you're not living right downtown yeah. is to lose your car, uh, you know? That's right. But I always yeah. tell my clients, I say, now, you, and I understand, you know, that you, you're telling me that you're willing to be out there at, at, you know, at risk, you know, that because you're not worried because if you get hurt, that's okay. But, you know, you run somebody over. Yeah. That's you're right. going to never forgive yourself, you know, just because... Your, your reaction time was a little bit slow. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. you're never going to forgive yourself, yeah. right? I'd rather have somebody call me up uh, and say, can you, you know, can you take me to such and such a place tonight because I, I don't feel comfortable driving. I, I'm there if, right. I, if somebody were to do that. And right. I did that for someone many years ago in the wintertime. She needed a haircut. She needed to go to, to the uh, hairdresser. And you just and It was less than a mile, but it was snowing. And it was, you know, 
10 inches of snow on the ground. Maybe the roads are still clear, but it was, uh, so I absolutely took her. Right, yeah. right, and that's, a, and that's a part of it too. So do, do you think, I'm, now I'm gonna circle back to the Center for Living. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you imagine the Center for Living um, being involved in some of those, because they already are, in some of those kind of what you, what, I, what you would consider not necessarily what others might think is their, yeah. is their core yeah. mission, yeah. But, but to be the, for want of a better term, kind of the island-wide entity that's dealing with things that individual towns aren't doing. It could doing. be the center. That's what it's called, yeah. the center for living. So from that center, you expand out, um, and that certainly can uh, uh, be a possibility, absolutely. Uh, the first thing we need to do with the Center for Living is get it up and running. Um, Which is coming? Well, I just read in the paper today that- Well, wait a minute, you're on the board. You're not supposed <laughs> to read in the paper. Right? Well, I, I just read in the today yeah. that it uh, looks like October may be a possible uh, An opening. opening day. But, great. you know, with construction, I wouldn't put yeah. my hat on, bet my hat on that. I would say probably v v much closer to January. But I was going to be and you And you were on the construction, weren't you on the... the, the I was the, on the, a little bit of the building committee. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Which, once again, yeah. I think was a real help. I know when I first w um, was involved with the Center for Living, because we, we've been, we've been w w representing the Center for a while, the, the law firm, and, and right. it, but it wasn't, it, you know, you didn't, you didn't have, well, the board was smaller, so you didn't have that kind of variety of experience. I know watching this construction process, I know you were involved, and Adam from, uh, from Aquina. From Aquina, Adam Wilson. Was, was very involved, yeah. once again, a person with government experience. So right, it, right. it really increased the total expertise of the board in many ways to have that kind of and it's not, that it, diversity. Yeah, and it's good to have a, a diverse board because uh, we all don't know everything. We think we might, but we right. don't. And, and so to have somebody um, uh, that's a, a little bit more expertise on, such as Adam with the contracts being right. administrator of Aquina, it really helped out a lot. So I'm, I'm, so I'm dying to be seeing the, and it was great to take a little walking tour, I think at the, yeah. at the last meeting, I'm sure a lot of folks who are watching are dying to see it also. And I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a kind of a grand opening. We should, when, definitely will have a grand opening to do that, absolutely. Um, I haven't been in since that one tour, and I understand it's moving along pretty pretty quickly. And uh, it, excited to see it uh, come to fruition. And to continue. Here I was a, a negative person, and now I've become a positive person because yeah. I want it to work. Yes. You know, it needs yes. it needs to work. Yes. You know, the towns are putting a lot of money into it, and um, we want it to be successful and grow. And, and for, see, for me, it's kind of it's kind of um, well, it's interesting to watch because Le uh, Leslie Clapp yes. was one of the first guests that I ever had on the show, and sh this would have been oh, Carl Carl Holt here would tell you <laughs> a lot of years ago, right? <laughs> and to think kind of where that programming has gone, and and now with some of the some of the you know the the endowment that they gotten, yes. and, and and then the town support, it, it's so exciting for me to watch. So, how so many of the pieces have come together, so that you really end up yeah. with a community here that's got really the really the, 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 the this great set of supports for folks who are, who are sure, getting older, sure. and folks like you who have become involved and in are in a, in a, a really kind of dedicated to kind of seeing this thing yeah. this yeah. thing play. Well, that's out. a puzzle coming together. It's a puzzle coming. Some together. Some of the pieces are not there yet, but they eventually they'll be all. Uh, put together and the picture will, will be perfect. Yes, and one of the fun things for me watching the board is watching that kind of dynamic, you know, because you're watching people who are, because everybody who is there uh, is, is, of, is not of like mind, but is open-minded yes. to listening to the other players, yes. which, which is the ideal, yeah. the ideal right. board. Right. So listen, yeah. thank, you, thank you very much for well, taking a few minutes. I know you're a, you're, a, you're a busy guy. I was you know, appreciative of just getting a sense, you know, I think for, for a lot of folks, getting a sense of, of you, yep. your sense of the Center for Living, your sense of, of, of seniors, I'm dying to go to the open house. I'm not, I'm, me too. That, that'll, that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. So thank you for coming. Thank you for um, Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the uh, next installment of Bergeron Briefs.